Hey, everybody. Happy 4th of July. Ed Carbajal here for MMANews.com. Make sure you like, subscribe, click the bell notification for the uh, MMANews.com YouTube channel where you'll find videos like this and all our interviews with for upcoming UFC events. Um, you can follow me on Twitter at Carbazel. That's my Twitter handle right there if you want to check out all the other work I do. And um, it's 4th of July, late in the day. I'm recording this late. Uh, I know it says uh, live show, but actually I'm actually not streaming this live this weekend because I know a lot of folks are probably out and about, um, you know, doing their 4th of July thing, barbecue, fireworks, beach, all that stuff. Um, hopefully your town is like doing it and didn't cancel anything like mine did. So um, let's get right into uh, the news. Now I know the, the uh, there wasn't a UFC event this weekend, but I, I hinted at it last weekend. There's other stuff to watch, especially if you have a Fight Pass account. We had uh, Cage Fury Fighting Championships, better known as CFFC out here in the Northeast. They did a uh, their first ever pro grappling event, which uh, with the setup and everything was beautiful. Uh, Danielle Kelly won the main in the, her main event uh, debut there. Coincidentally, she used to be a ring card girl. They talked about it during CFFC 98, which was the night at CFFC has been doing this thing where they do back-to-back -back events at the 2300 arena, especially during the pandemic. And I like what they're doing there. So if you missed out on um, what they did over the weekend, plus, so I'll let you know, just Friday night alone, there was uh, the, uh, the Fury Pro Grappling. This is on Fight Pass. Titan FC 70, where Bruno Assis, if you didn't catch the main event of that, Bruno Assis picked up a submission victory after almost getting knocked out. Um, and then uh, what else was LFA 110 was Friday night. So I'm mentioning all these because, you know, I must have seen it even from it's funny because Bilal Muhammad tweeted out, you know, there's no fights this weekend. And then the CFFC 98 aired last night and. John Morgan called him out on it. If you don't know, John Morgan is the uh, first question guy that's always at the UFC press conferences. He does stuff for MMA Junkie. Um, but he also does commentary for Cage Fury Fighting Championships alongside CM Punk. So, you know, they uh, they threw some shade at Bilal Muhammad for saying that because the reason why I'm bringing it up is because a lot of these guys at these events, if you haven't figured it out not, right by now, um, you know, they, they get signed to the UFC eventually. I mean, the, Terrence McKinney was only like three weeks from his – from LFA 109, <clears throat> main eventing at LFA 109 before he made his UFC debut um, not so long ago and picked up, almost picked up one of the fastest knockouts. I forget what is he, like 10 seconds at knockout? Hmm. And um, I'm going to lead into UFC 264 news with this because, uh, you know, I read off the card briefly last weekend and then we, we saw that we lost, uh, we didn't lose it, but. Uh, you know, it was supposed to be opening up the main card, Sean O'Malley versus Lewis Smolka. Um, <clears throat> Smolka had a withdrawal because of an, an injury, and now Chris Moutinho got called into to, to the fight. Brand new guy to the UFC. So, like, a lot of people are, are like, you know, you had all these people. It's at bantamweight. I can think of one bantamweight off the top of my head who just picked up a win at the same event. Uh, McKinney did in LFA 109. Justin Wetzel, I mean, maybe maybe he can't do as fast a turnaround, you know what I mean? But like, there there was plenty of other guys that were that were ready to go, and a lot of folks seem to, to have taken issues with the UFC uh, making that bringing on a new guy rather than than all these other people that were raising their hands to step in and fight. Like um, more, you know, for especially you want to sell pay per view, but you have to remember what they're booking too, like. They don't want to book somebody that's going to give Sean O'Malley some serious problems. Now they can open up with a nice highlight reel of O'Malley. I mean, not to knock Mutino. I don't know anything about Mutino because it's a brand new person that they signed. Um, but <clears throat> we'll see. I mean, short notice, you know, most of the time favors the guy that's been prepared. So I don't see O'Malley losing for sure. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, badly or rather. Uh, so that's a main card chain. So now... Looking at the main card, I mean, I'm just going to preview the uh, really quick the main card before I submit my picks officially to MMANews.com. Um, so we'll start off the top, Dustin Poirier versus Conor McGregor. Um, I think I said it last week. I'll say it again. 
I think Poirier can pull off pull it off again. Um, the only thing uh, that makes me hesitate when I say that is uh, historically for rematches, McGregor doesn't lose his rematch. If, if I'm not mistaken, I don't remember his first uh, his first loss was a knee bark against that other Irish guy that I forget his name. I know the UFC eventually brought him in, hoping to get a rivalry between them, but uh, that the gentleman never uh, never won enough to to stick around. But um, I mean, we look at uh, uh, the Diaz thing. He won a decision there, and then um, I'm trying to think. Um, I mean, with Khabib, I guess. I mean, that's that's not a lot of history. Let me look at his record now. Now I'm thinking about it. Let's see how many rematches because he's got. Well. I mean, technically, Poirier was a rematch, but, you know, he lost that one. So hey, maybe he's 50-50, right? He's 50-50 in, in rematches. Nate Diaz right after, yeah. 50-50 in rematches. Joe Duffy is uh, the fighter I couldn't think of from Cage Warriors. Cage Warriors coming to uh, the U.S. at the end of July. Pretty sure I mentioned that last weekend. Um Anyway, so let's bring up the current news up at uh, MMANews.com. Since we're in fight week, you're going to see a lot of UFC 264 stuff here at MMANews.com, um, including things like this countdown video, uh, the news I talked about with uh, the stuff. Uh, the stuff that... Um, sorry. The stuff I just talked about with uh, with with uh, O'Malley, um, there it is. Prediction for uh, his prediction for the main event, but um, we got to look at the um, other thing that popped up since I last recorded last Sunday was the interim title heavyweight thing. I know that has nothing to do with UFC 264, but we're, I'm sure we're going to get a lot of ads and explanations and press conferences on Thursday. So that's probably a popular question that's going to come up. You know, McGregor have arrived in Vegas yesterday. I think I already saw a video of uh, like fans. Someone used the word fans accosting. <laughs> oh, here it is. That's this one. The video is up at mmanews.com. But if you've never been to, to uh, here's a video of it right here. I mean, that's fairly common. If you've never been to Vegas on McGregor fight week, you can expect a lot of this stuff happening. So, I mean, I guess it's open. Uh, Vegas is open and no better man to bring to the city. I mean, even he's coming off of a loss, that's a star power for you. Look at that. When he came to UFC 205, out, outside of the fact that I was the first like big MMA event in New York after the, the ban on the sport got lifted, but, um, you know, uh, the energy is definitely different for this one. I mean, something about doing it in Vegas like this versus what we got at Abu Dhabi. I know that's cool and everything, Flight Island or whatever. It's what It worked for, you know, the times we're in, but this is obviously uh, – that's this is why the UFC likes to put things on in Vegas. You know what I mean? Um, they uh, they certainly run, run a good show there. Yeah. Um, so uh, everything's sold out. There's going to be a howler head. Like uh, you, there, there, I've never seen a viewing party hosted for an event in another arena right across the street from the arena. How there's a howler head tasting hundred bucks a ticket. Um, you know, like for, uh, I think Brandon Moreno is supposed to be there and stuff like that, but they're doing it in the MGM grand arena while this is going on. So you can watch the pay-per-view in an arena and, and taste some howler head. And then watch the U the uh, UFC 264 uh, pay per view event, which is to me that's crazy. That I've never seen anything like that before. But I mean, the stuff that we're in now with technology and, and stuff like that, it's just it's just crazy. The options that we're getting to, you know, uh, I think there's some movie theaters that are going to pick it up. Um, I, it, it, it's just crazy the the all the stops that they pull for for when it's a McGregor fight week. Mm. So, um, looking at the uh, the card, let me go back here because that's where I got lost my train of thought. So um, I still think uh, Poya can pull it off. Uh, Burns versus Thompson. That that's actually the sleeper. 
in this pay per view for me. Burns versus Thompson. You know, it's got the you know obviously the winner. Of this is probably going to get uh, first in line to face Kamaru Usman. Um, <clears throat> I've actually had spoken to. I've interviewed both of them in the past. Uh, Burns, I interviewed for a, a Titan FC like grappling thing. He did like a, I think it was. I don't know if it was combat jiu-jitsu or just jiu-jitsu grappling super fight. And then and Stephen Thompson's actually been on the podcast that I do, Coast to Coast Combat Hour. Um, I really like both guys. They're both solid dudes as far as like just like nice human beings and usually uh, open and communicative when you reach out to them to do interviews and stuff like that. Um, I like Stephen Thompson's YouTube channel too. You know, for a guy that comes from like traditional martial arts, he's definitely adapted them well to, um, um, <clears throat> you know, putting out the uh, put, transitioning over to uh, mixed martial arts from from your standard karate because he used to do like like uh, WCL. I forget the name of that Chuck Norris uh, pit fighting thing from way back in the day. It used to be on the Versus Network. Mm. But um. The uh, Burns, you know, training at Sanford MMA, and, and we've seen his hands have gotten a lot better. Never mind his his ground game is. This is a this is a, there's a mock poster out there of like a karate versus jujitsu type of uh, like this is the main event. And that's the fight. It's almost like UFC one feels to it. But you got <clears throat> two modern combat sports athletes that are stepping into uh, to do that. Um, me take this down because there's really nothing of worth on the screen right now, but um, because I'm looking at the the card here, um, I would say that Thompson has a reach advantage, so Burns is going to have to use footwork and stuff to either counter and try to get inside and, and put pressure on him to impose his ground game. But that's nothing new to Stephen Thompson. I mean, if you look at all the wrestlers he's put away with with that the that lead side kick that he does from that karate stance, I mean, I, I don't. Uh, this is going to be a, a one hell of a fight. I hate I hate to make a pick. Oh boy, I'm going to lean Thompson. I'm going to lean Stephen Stephen Thompson because uh that dude's uh I just feel like the the reach height reach advantage and um you know, it's not like he's no slouch on if he does get put down on his back. I'm sure he's going to work to get back up. Ty Tuvasa versus Greg Hardy. Heavyweight, uh, it's uh, it's your middle fight of the card, you know. <clears throat> Tai Tuvasa, it's it's Greg Hardy's like you know the the bad guy and football player coming in. And man, he doesn't have a lot of fans, um, but they keep main eventing him, so not main event, but main carding him. So we're gonna see, uh, we're gonna see how long that lasts. Tai Tuvasa is definitely the person that can test him. I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to pick two to Vasa. I know Hardy's proven to to have some the one knockout, one punch knockout power, put somebody away as easily as you know, easier than anybody. But um, I do think uh, to to Vasa might be prepared for. You know, we've seen a lot of Greg Hardy already. I, I think Tui Vasa is probably going to be prepared for that. Irene Aldana versus Yana Kuniskaya. That's the second fight of the main card. Um, Yana Kuniskaya. She. She's from, she's from Russia. I know she fought in Invicta, and she's got she she's been in the UFC for a while now since a couple of years. Uh, yeah, she lost to Cyborg at UFC two twenty two. That was her first fight. Um, but she was a former Invicta, you know, bantamweight champion there. So I'm wondering, she's got a two fight win streak, and I'm wondering if uh, if uh, Irene Aldana. Who's coming off of a decision loss to Holly Holm? Hmm. I don't know. I feel like uh, leaning. I'm gonna lean Kuniskaya just because she's a former title holder. Uh, coming coming off of wins, I know Aldana, Aldana coming off a of decision loss. Usually, when someone comes off of a decisive loss, I feel like that's more motivation to get back in the win column. But um, I, it's hard for me not to pick a, a former former champ. And then I already talked about O'Malley versus Mutino. Was supposed to be Smoka. Um, um, either way, it's hard not to pick it. O O'Malley just because he's got that ectomorph body type. He's got a high reach and advantage. And then for this particular fight, since his opponent's a last-minute switch-up, um, you know, it's hard not to pick the guy that's been in camp 
ready to fight for a while. So, um, and the rest of the card is pretty. Uh, I mean, the Ryan Hall is going to be on the ESPN prelims against Ilya Topuria. Uh, Carlos Condit's going to the main like the last fight of the prelims on ESPN. Carlos Condit versus Matt Griffith. Uh, Nico Price versus Michelle Pejeda. I, I know I read all this stuff off last Sunday, but you know, worth mentioning again, you know, being that we're coming into fight week. Now, this is the first like. Because last July they were in Abu Dhabi, if I'm not mistaken. I'm pretty yeah, they were in Abu Dhabi for at Fight Island. So this is technically the first international fight week um, back on uh, the uh, UFC's soil in Las Vegas. Um, I don't know if I've talked about it here before, but that used to be like a must go to event in Las Vegas. Like if you didn't go to International Fight Week. You couldn't call yourself a fight fan. I went to two. I went to 2015 one, 2016 one. Um, 2016 one was where the sale was announced. So I'm always expecting. I'm always expecting a. Um, uh, something, some big news coming out of that week. If you're looking at the business calendar year, this is this is usually. I saw a meme the other day of like uh, companies, how they change. Uh, on July 1st, like it was like a, a happy face to like some scary clown face or something like that. But um, I, I can't help but think of the UFC because I remember the 2015 Fan Expo. First of all, they don't even do the Fan Expo anymore. I think this Howlerhead thing might be their substitute for the Fan Expo. But before International Fight Week, you had your big fight, multiple events that week. You know, there was, the, I remember there was an Invicta card and uh, a fight, UFC fight night. So it was like Thursday, Friday. So you had like three three nights of events. So you there was part parties by you know sponsors. I went to a Pandora thing that were Wyclef surprised everybody at. Paige Van Zant was there. Like this was brand new, I think, and she was like you know saying stuff on the microphone because she that's when she was like first. She was winning. She was very popular. I mean, not that she's not popular now. She's probably more popular now. But um, um, the uh. Like if, if you were there for International Fight Week, you could literally just show up, not even have tickets to a fight, but have plenty to do. Um, I mean, the Fan Expo tickets were, were worth having because it was just like uh, you paid to get into this Expo Hall. When one the twenty fifteen one was at the Venetian, and then they used like the Las Vegas Expo Expo Center for that last one. Which I remember feeling in twenty sixteen, I was like, this feels a little. I was like, this is not as cool. The 2015 one, it was just like you got into the expo hall, it was in the it was in the Venetian or whatever they their their uh, banquet space or whatever that is called, the building connected to it. Um and like you were rubbing elbows with you know legend former fighters, current fighters. Um it was just a great time. It was just a great time. Um and now if you look at my 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 co-host Matt Hawkins. I mean, check, if you're not following him on Twitter, give him of uh, the Coast to Coast Combat Hour po- podcast. Follow him on Twitter. You'll see um, he always posts puts pictures up when he goes to to fights and stuff like that. And uh, I don't think he's going. He actually said he's not going to 264, but he went to the last couple of in, you know since 2016. And the Fan Expo turned into a tent, just selling UFC merch for just outside the T-Mobile Center. So it went from being in a nice big air conditioned expo hall to being outside. It's like a hundred degrees in Vegas right now. If you you know if you're not unfamiliar with uh, how the seasons work out there <laughs> or lack of seasons, um, it's in the desert you know, for crying out loud. Um, so it's not what like I was thinking of going. I'm still thinking of going. If I can find like a last minute cheap flight, I might even go. Um, but. Um, Every year I think about going because I got used to going, and then I, I look at what they're doing for for fans, and it's it's just like, yeah, I think I, I have a better time just watching it, you know, from the way I've been watching it, watching it from home, go to a bar and watch it. I mean, I'm in New Jersey, so we can do that here um, right now. So, um, yeah, it's definitely been. Um, a lot of changes. So I'm expecting. So I'll give you a couple of my predictions announcements. I'm expecting out of this international fight week, or we're probably going to get the next 
we're already getting if you follow folks like Nolan King and MMA Junkie and stuff, folks like that that are breaking, you know, uh, fight announcements and stuff like that. We're already getting our next few calendar events, whatever. But the official announcements will probably come the, on on UFC this week of UFC 264, and I think we're going to get a. Um, we might get even get a, a NFT announcement. They already started their thing with Socios. The same thing that the PFL is doing, like fan tokens. So you can like vote and stuff from whatever. I, I'm not sure how. The, I don't know how deep the UFC likes to try a lot of things and see what sticks. So I know the the uh, they were supposed to announce their NFT, their non fungible token project in June, according to Emmanuel when he did a when um if you remember when he was doing all the Ari Emanuel, the owner of Endeavor and UFC and everything, Dana's boss. Um, when they were talking, I know he says he doesn't have a boss, but that's that's the guy. Um, uh, that he was doing a lot of interviews that week when Endeavor went public, so you could buy like EDP, the the stock exchange stuff or whatever. And he said that they were going to launch an NFT on Cheddar, I believe, um, in June, but we're way past June, so. If they're going to do that, I would think this would be. I mean, Connor's the guy you want to sell something, you put Connor on, especially UFC related. I mean, we, we just saw the video of fans and stuff like that. So he's definitely somebody that can sell stuff. If you look at his proper 12 and the, the way Vegas is looking right now, mm, you can't even get tickets to that uh, fight. Um, so it's up to you if you want to go, unless you got other stuff going on. And you used to get uh, like email announcements to make you want to go, but I, the only thing I got was that Hallerhead announcement. That was it. But like there used to be like you know meet and greets and you know throughout the week and the stuff to do. But coming after Fourth of July, you would think some people had some time off and would want to get down there. But I don't know. We'll see how how it all works out. I mean, you don't. It's it's almost like COVID is a distant memory, but um, it's going to be a. Uh, Certainly going to be a, a, an entertaining time at UFC 264. A, a little housekeeping note. I'm just going to say it because you might you may find me a little low energy today. It's Fourth of July weekend. By the way, I'm wearing my Smithsonian shirt because uh, that's the closest thing I got to something patriotic. <clears throat> but um, you know, tied one on last night. That's why I'm recording this so late too. But it's Fourth of July weekend, America's birthday. What do you what, what do you what else are you going to do, right? Um, and I watched a bunch of fights. I did watch a bunch of fights. So I mentioned the all the CFFC stuff. They mentioned the uh, Sajara Eubanks is going to be fighting CFFC's. Uh, I believe she was their strawweight champion. She defended. She won the belt, defended it twice, and now she's she's scheduled to fight Sajara Eubanks in the UFC upcoming card. And the whole reason I'm bringing it back to that is because of what, like you know, for all the folks saying that there was no fights this weekend, there was plenty of fights a weekend. All, mostly on fight pass, but a lot of these guys get signed to the UFC, and then they get signed in, in, in you know notable fights like that one. I don't know if that's the fight that I would have done for you know somebody making a UFC debut because Sajar Eubanks is one tough lady, like not for nothing. I mean, I I, uh, I think if she loses, she loses by decision. I haven't, I haven't I don't remember her getting finished badly. I'm sure somebody will drop in the comments, um, you know whatever i'm forgetting but it's definitely um definitely uh, a reason to watch the regionals so just because there's no ufc on because we're going to hit one of those these uh blank parts in august i believe um you know probably towards the end of august so there'll be pfl back by then and you know belter is coming back to july 16th um so you know the business is booming as as uh as far as the fight business goes. So not a lot to talk about, I know. So <clears throat> maybe we won't do the full 30 minutes today, but um, I just figured I'd catch up and give you my new predictions, especially with the update of, of the uh, of the UFC 264 main card. Um, I doubt that's the only thing that's going to happen. Let's, you know, and at times of, I mean, we're still in COVID times and they still have protocols they have to follow. I'm sure with the athletes and stuff like that, I know that's, I encountered that when I was doing um, when I was supposed to go to Bellator a couple of weeks ago, and I wound up having to do it from home because I didn't get clarification on the like you know they they still have to 
do COVID protocols to protect the athletes so they can put on, you know, their performances that we've been seeing lately. Um, I'm trying to think what else is uh, any big news that I've missed. Uh, this is worth mentioning, actually. Is it on here? John Dodson. Are you? So John, John Dodson was involved in an accident. He was supposed to fight at a new, you know, he, the UFC let him go. He was supposed to fight at XC MMA. Um, and they set up a go. I'm sorry, X MMA promotion. Um, they set up a GoFundMe on the uh, Ricky Ko Five Hundred Five Instagram page, which is that's a uh, Dodson's manager. So you can go to MMAnews.com and read this article. But the link to if you want to dedicate. Uh, donate some money to John Johnson's GoFundMe because obviously it was him and his family. So it's uh some scary stuff out there. You know these these guys are human beings that we you, you gotta remember that they're not all super supermen. Um. Oh yeah, and this news came out about the interim title. I know I just I kind of touched on it and went another way, but um. I mean, Cyril Gain doesn't get the interim title booking, but I mean, um, I saw an interesting video where Eddie Alvarez kind of said like how the the interim title is just a it's a it's a ploy to kind of toy with the fighters and you know on the bargaining table, or whatever. I don't know. You have to find it where he says you know like the 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 money is what what matters, but they're using this title to to kind of like make the fighters. You know, I, you want to make money or do you want to be champion type of thing? I mean, we don't know, but Eddie Alvarez, you know, we don't know how these things go. Everyone has their opinions. I know that when that got announced, that that drew a lot of ire. But, I mean, I'm so used to interim titles coming out of the UFC. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like it, I, it doesn't bother me or shock me. Um, the thing that does uh, kind of surprise me a little well, I mean, or what would surprise me is if they didn't do that and they said, let's do a tournament or let's, you know, best of five, let's do a round robin thing, you know, just to, to get the best person to fight for the title, or whatever, because it looks like they're this whole thing with, uh, you know, John Jones and moving up and down and weight and having not fought. And it just seems to, to be, um, I don't want to say messing it up, but it's making me lose my interest in the heavyweight division, right? So, um, that's where we are with that. But I mean, listen, at the end of the day, you know, uh, I had a uh, Chris Reaney on the podcast I do earlier in the week and we were talking about the business of, um, you know, MMA and the UFC and all that stuff, like the, just the way things have, have been going. And for all the, the noise folks make when they see something they don't like, you know, UFC 264 Saturday, and people people are still gonna watch it. It's still gonna be trending on Twitter, and and you know what I mean. Like like like, we can speak. If you really don't like something, then don't give it. it it's it's like the Paul brothers. Everybody gets pissed off at them because of what they're doing, but whatever they're doing, they're making you say their name. So they're they you're falling right into you're falling right into the whole thing of, of, of the, the gamesmanship on the business side of stuff where come giving, you know, making distracting fighters from the money side and just going after the title, whatever you fall right into it and you, and you become a pawn in the game. And if you really don't like it, then don't watch it. You know what I mean? Like that's the, that, that's the best way to, to, to show you if, if the numbers are low for whatever they're trying to sell us, then they'll be like, well, maybe we shouldn't have done that, you know, but um, UFC's for, Fans especially will always, at the end of the day, even if you look at the worst hater of the UFC, they're still going to watch. They'll still be on Twitter. Oh, my God, look at this move. So-and-so and making their jokes or whatever. So, you know, about about the event and using the hashtag and, and just because it's everybody wants to still be in the conversation. So um, I, the, I, I'm saying all that because whether we like the interim titles or not, I mean, this is not the first one they've done. It's not going to be the last. So. Well, we might as well just get used to it. But anyway, I didn't want to leave anybody without uh, uh, any uh, content this week. And, you know, especially with we're coming on once the fireworks are, are over tonight, the fireworks to look forward to on UFC 264. Everyone's excited about the Poirier McGregor rematch. 
and it's hard not to get excited. I mean, you know, if you're a fight fan, what else? What are we doing here, right? So we'll be having plenty of coverage up at MMAnews.com. Make sure, you, again, like, subscribe, click the bell notification for the YouTube channel. Uh, results, predictions, everything for UFC 264. It'll be a heavy UFC 264 week at MMAnews.com. I guarantee it. And then um, if you want to follow me for some other news outside of uh, MMAnews.com, that's my Twitter handle, at Carbazel. Thank you so much for listening. Happy birthday, America. Enjoy your 4th of July. Don't, don't, don't blow your fingers off and any of that stuff. Don't drink too much. I'm tapping out. See you next week.